Hey guys, we have here a new 12 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery to test today. And this battery is assembled by Shenzhen Basin Technology Company. So I guess they've been following my videos for a little while now, and they reached out to me and let me know that towards the end of 2020, uh, they had actually purchased a battery assembly plant. So in talking with them, it sounds like they have several years of experience in this sort of thing, and they've assured me they have a good understanding of quality. So we'll do our usual test on this battery today. We'll open it up and see how it's built, and we'll go from there. So as I've stated, this is a 12 volt, 100 amp hour. It's actually 12.8 volts nominal. And this particular battery is rated for 50 amps charge, 100 amps discharge, a peak discharge of 260 amps for three seconds. And we have the fairly standard charge parameters, 14.6 volts, which is 3.65 per cell, and 10 volts as the cutoff, which is 2.5 volts per cell. Uh, the case is fairly standard here. It's just a cheap plastic case with two handles. It's very similar to some other batteries on the market. It seems to be a commonly used case. So looking at our terminals here, we have an M8 bolt. It's nice to see something larger than M6. A lot of manufacturers use M6. It is kind of short though. It would have been nice to see a longer bolt. I probably wouldn't put more than one lug on this bolt. But we do have a lock washer and a flat washer, which is good. So I just charged this up at about 8 amps using my iCharger X6. Alright, so I got my standard test set up here. Battery's connected to a Batrium Watchmon 5. This is a Batrium shunt for the metering device. Goes over to this 2000 watt uh, 12 volt inverter. We have an Android display here showing voltage, amperage, wattage, and then amp hours and watt hours as reported by the Batrium. I built me this new load here, which is pretty cool, instead of using space heaters and trying to guess uh, what's a 0.2 C rate. So this just allows me to thread in the amount of light bulbs I need to reach the desired wattage. So I've got four uh, 72 watt incandescent light bulbs here, which gives me 288 watts or 22.5 amps, so that's pretty close to a 0.2 C or 20 amp rate test. Alright, so now we're sitting at approximately 24.32 amps. We'll leave this run until this battery reaches low voltage disconnect and we'll see what our measured capacity is. Alright, I missed the exact voltage when it shut down, but I believe it was around 10.5 volts. And you can see our final capacity is 103.5 amp hours. So we are 3.5 amp hours above the rating of this battery. Alright, so unfortunately this battery is glued along the top seam here. Now in the past I have opened these by cutting, you know, using a Dremel or just prying it apart. And I don't like doing that because we end up destroying the battery and then we can't use it after the fact. Um, and actually the last one I had done that with, I damaged the battery and then I had to actually pay to recycle and dispose of that battery. Uh, so one interesting point that was made on one of my prior videos was somebody had said that if you freeze these, the plastic becomes very brittle and it's very easy to get this apart when it's at a frozen state. One frosty battery. So before we try opening this up, I want to use this as an opportunity to make sure the low temperature disconnect does not allow charging uh, below freezing. Phosphate, charge, start. Oh, it doesn't even have voltage. It says 1.8 volts, so that's perfect. It's not going to allow charging. The BMS has shut it off for safety reasons. Alright, so I did unfortunately chip away a little bit of the corner here, but uh, basically I just took this chisel and went the whole way around the case, and I see it is actually starting to pull apart here. I didn't think this was going to work. I don't want to get my fingers pinched in there. Alright, there we go. What is, there's a Bluetooth module in here. All right, so I know this was supposed to have a JBD BMS in it, but I was not expecting Bluetooth. I'll have to see if I can connect this with my phone. But right away we can see our main wiring here is a pair of 10 gauge silicone insulated uh, conductors with a 200 degree Celsius insulation rating. We have our positive and our negative. Everything is glued in here pretty well. You can see they used a lot of, I don't know if it's caulking or some kind of silicone glue or adhesive. I don't want to stick anything metal in there because I don't know. All right, so I see they are aluminum cased prismatic cells. All right, so I just went the entire way around the perimeter with this uh, putty knife very carefully and it looks like it has broken free and it is going to slide out. Come on, battery. Give me the battery. All right, there we go. They filled the empty space with a lot of this padding. This is some very hard foam. Haven't seen that done before, but sure, why not? 
All right, guys, I got this battery all cleaned off, and as you can see, there was a lot of uh, epoxy board and just tape and all kind of stuff holding this battery together. On the front here, you can see the JBD BMS. Uh, so that's going to be similar to uh, what Battery Hookup is selling. Current Connected and Overkill Solar, I believe, are all JBD as well. You can see the version number here. It's rated for 100 amps. The only thing I question here is how this BMS is stuck directly to the side of the battery uh, because this is going to heat up on a normal use, especially if you're pushing 100 amps through it um, and that heat may get transferred to the battery itself. Now they do have this piece of epoxy board separating the BMS from the battery pack, but uh, the temperature sensor is just laying here loose. That's fine to me because this whole thing is wrapped together as one bundle anyway. Um, so yes, it's going to pick up the temperature of the BMS a little bit, but considering that BMS is mounted directly to the battery, I think this is fine the way this is set up. Looking at the top here, we can see these cells all have their original QR codes. I did notice that one of these has a blue vent and the other three have clear vents. Uh, this vent cover is actually missing because uh, this tape was going over it and when I yanked up this tape it actually pulled that vent cover off. I was not able to determine what brand cells these actually are though. Here's a close up of the QR code if anybody happens to know. I don't recognize it. I looked at several pictures of 100 amp cells on uh, Google and Alibaba and I couldn't find this similar cell. So. We can see the bus bars are made of aluminum and they are welded very nicely down to the battery. It's those square patterns there are the welds. And then they have a separate piece of material here welded on top of the bus bar and that's where the balance lead is soldered. I'm guessing this is either nickel or steel. It's not very malleable. I can't really bend it so I don't know that it's nickel. And then where the actual terminals connect to the battery we have a piece of aluminum bent up at a 90 degree angle. Uh, and it's a nice strong piece where you can connect the ring terminals. Looking at the side profile, these batteries looks good as well. These cells are not swollen, bulging, or anything like that. They do have a very thin piece of uh, rubberish material, neoprene or something similar, between each one of the series cells to separate them. That's why they look like they're spaced a little bit apart. That space is not from bulging, it's because of the separator. And then they're all held together with this uh, fiber-based tape. So this is very strong tape. It won't necessarily exert compression on the sides to keep them squeezed in but uh, it will prevent this battery pack from expanding as a whole. So now one thing I want to see is if I can get connected to this BMS dongle here. I've got my BMS app and I can see it finds that this first one is going to be my current connected BMS that I'm still testing so it must be this one. It actually connected, whoa! Uh, so there we go, we have the voltages of the cells and it looks like our differential is 195 millivolts at uh, low voltage disconnect. Uh, so this has been sitting for about 24 hours since I did that original test. Now, uh, manufacture date is May 18, 2021, and BMS read. All right, so we pulled back all of the settings here. You can see the cell full voltage is set for 3.40 volts. So we can see the balancer is configured to begin at 3.40 volts if there's more than a 15 millivolt difference. Uh, over voltage is 3.65, under voltage is 2.5 volts. Battery over voltage is 14.6, under volt is 10, so these are exactly as specified on the enclosure. Over temp charging 65, under temp charging is negative 1. Probably would have set this to 1 or 2 degrees Celsius, but not a deal breaker in my opinion. While I think it's incredibly cool that I can go into this app and see and change the settings on the BMS of this battery, I'm kind of surprised they allow you to do that because I can see this being a liability issue. If somebody uh, finds their way into this BMS app and can change these settings, not realizing or not understanding how this battery works and they change one of these settings that disables the protection of this BMS. So while you can go in here and look at this and it's incredibly cool, I certainly would not encourage people to go modifying settings within a pre-configured battery like this. So yeah, I really feel like this is a great deal for what this battery costs. Unfortunately, there are no U.S. distributors currently. I did ask them about that. They said they are looking for some, but they don't have any yet. So this can be purchased on Alibaba, and their price for that is going to vary depending on where you live. For me, it says $351 is the estimate. So I'm still not sure what brand cells they are. However, they do appear to be grade A. There's no bulging or anything like that. There's no damage to them. They are laser welded together perfectly with these nice thick aluminum tabs. We get a JBD BMS, that's, and this is a quality BMS, whereas some vendors are just throwing in whatever they can find that's cheap, and uh, I've shown some of those on this channel already. The only thing I really noted that was questionable was the fact that this BMS is mounted directly to the side of the battery. Instead of mounting it somewhere like to the lid or the side of the enclosure, they certainly have plenty of space within that enclosure, so I'm not sure why they are mounting it to the battery. And I also want to thank the person uh, who suggested 
I don't remember what your name is off the top of my head, so I do apologize, but uh, the person who suggested freezing this and then chipping it apart, because had I not broken this little corner here, I would have been able to put this back together near perfectly. Uh, so that was definitely a pretty interesting idea. Thank you for that. And then one last thing I didn't mention was that because this was glued together, this enclosure does carry an IP65 rating. So what that means is it is dust resistant and it is water resistant. I think it's set up until like if there's a steady stream going on or something like that. Still does not beat the SOK, but it is $200 cheaper and this is a good value for what you get. I'd love to hear what you guys think if you have one of these. If you're interested in purchasing one, I will leave a link in the description below. And I also want to give a big thank you to Alex at Shenzhen Basin for sending this out to me for review. He is the person who has helped me with my previous purchases of the EVE 280 and 230s, and uh, I've been very happy with those as well. So hit that like button before you go, and once again, thanks for watching.